Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DNB and in today's video I'm going to be answering all your architecture and interior design questions. Honestly, I get so many DMs and comments with questions that are often the same but just from different people so I thought that I would clear all of those up today and hopefully it's helpful for a lot of our creative crew. I have a couple of other videos focusing on interior design and answering your questions so I'll leave that playlist linked down below for you guys to check out. But for now, if you're interested, let's jump in. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump into the first question. So Adele asks, tips on what an interior design studio looks for at interviews slash new applications, please. That's really interesting because Lazo and I were having a conversation about this and he had a completely different answer to me about what he would look for in an applicant compared to me. So for him, he was saying that it's all about having a unique portfolio, work that really jumps out of the page, something to capture our attention. For example, having really, really good hand drawing skills that obviously a lot of people don't actually have anymore. Whereas when I answered the question, I was 100% focused on software. If I was to hire someone, I really want to see that you can render amazing visualizations. And I'm not meaning that you have to know all the different kinds of software because in architecture and interiors, there's too many to learn. But I just want to know that you can at least use one really, really well. So number one, be good on the computer. That's kind of what I would look for in someone who I would want to hire. And number two, I would say having a sense of style. Laszlo and I both really agreed on this. Because we run our own design studio, it would obviously help if someone we employed had the same kind of vision of a project. I personally wouldn't want to hire someone who had, you know, a wacky or edgy kind of design style because let's face it, it just isn't the kind of projects we produce for our clients. So in that way, I would expect them to have a good sense of style. But of course that is completely subjective. So take that with a pinch of salt. But what I'm really trying to get across here is I would love to see a portfolio where an interior has a really cohesive interior design scheme. Everything has got to go together really well. And lastly, for myself, I think hard work is really important. Well, not hard work. I don't want to say that, you know, this hustle culture kind of thing, not my thing. But I would say having a really strong work ethic. And for me, when I look at portfolios, you can really see how long someone has spent on a project, to be honest with you. For example, if someone had really high quality renders compared to someone and I'm not trying to roast anyone here, but someone who had just done a line drawing and then, you know, collaged something together in Photoshop. I know which one took longer. So if I were to choose out of those kind of ones, I would obviously love to pick someone who's taken a lot longer to work on something because it shows how passionate they are and what work they're willing to put into a project. And I think my last tip on that, if it wasn't for me and you're just thinking of any design studio you're applying for, I would have a look at other people's portfolios and kind of compare yours to theirs, if that makes sense. You know, rank the portfolios and whichever one you think are the top three, try emulate that in yours. Obviously not in terms of the actual project and don't copy anyone, but you know, in terms of the layout, in terms of text, font styles, I mean, in terms of how they've laid things out, it's really helpful, I think. What I also like to think of is when I see a portfolio and I, look at it and I think, hmm, yeah, I could have done that myself. I, I'm not really looking to employ that person, but if I saw something where I looked at it and I was like, wow, how long did that take to do? Or wow, how would I even do that? That's when, you know, you're really wanting to work with that person. I don't know if any of this is making sense, but just having a slight wow factor, something unique as well. But to be honest with you, that's not the number one thing I look for in an employee. Okay, so question two is, is there a fully funded interior architecture program available in the UK or in Europe? Mm. So if you mean fully funded, I'm assuming you mean like some kind of scholarship. And I think I've received this question before when someone asked me, are there scholarships in um, Europe? As far as I know, we don't do that kind of thing here. 
I'm not sure about the rest of Europe, but definitely in the UK scholarships aren't a thing, which I honestly find amazing in America that you get a chance to get your education for free. But here, unfortunately, no, that is, that is not an option. And even worse, if you're international, it's I think £21,000 a year to go to university in the UK. But for residents, it's roughly £9,000 a year, but there is a student loan that you get. So that obviously helps. So I'm really sorry about that if I wasn't helpful or I crushed your dreams then. Do your research, but as far as I know, definitely I haven't heard of a like free university course, just saying. I'm not 100% sure, but I know Scottish citizens get um, free university, but everywhere where you would be an international student, I'm not sure that you would get something fully funded, sorry. Okay, question three. Can an interior design student do a master's in interior architecture? It really depends on where you apply. I would say yes, absolutely, to be completely honest with you, because there's not much difference between the two areas. They really kind of merge into one. It's kind of like saying, could you do a master's in art if you had done a bachelor's in illustration? The answer is probably yes, but some places are really picky, so it honestly just depends. Question four, I'm trying to leave architecture. Thank you for making this video very insightful. You're welcome. I wrote down my hobbies, personality traits, and what I'm good at, and it all seems to fit better into interior design. Is interior architecture concept-based, similar to architecture, or is it more technical? I had some confusion understanding that part. I think that they're both equally technical, but on architecture you're focusing more on the structural and engineering side of things. And for me personally, I didn't care about that. Just saying. And with interiors, you're focusing on more technical things in terms of architectural details, furniture, fixtures, all those kind of specifications. And I've said this before, but for me, I picked interiors over architecture because I cared about interiors more, you know? And I don't know if that makes any sense, but what I'm trying to say is I cared about the furniture, materials, colours, soft furnishings, all that kind of stuff as well. And obviously with architecture, you don't really get to explore that kind of side. So if you're debating whether to do interior design or architecture, write down what really matters to you. What are you interested in? If the first thing you think about is designing buildings, write that down. If the second thing is creating concepts, write that down. If the third thing is creating mood boards, write that down. Write down a big list of ideas and then you'll be able to actually see which side you're more interested in. I think that will really help. Oh, this is a home decor question. I love this kind of video and your suggestions, thank you. So many of the bathrooms though, quite different from one another, are all beautiful. I have a question about trends. How long do trends usually last? If one renovates a kitchen or bathroom in a trendy style, will that trendiness be a liability if the house has to be sold five or 10 years down the line? That's a valid point. Renovations can be very expensive after all, and it would be a shame if a reno becomes dated soon. I did a bathroom trends video and Honestly, I think that whether it's a current trend or not, style does change over time with anything. Every 10 years, I would say style does change drastically. You know, look at 70s living rooms compared to what we think is a good living room now. You know, if you like a current trend, I would say absolutely go for it if you like it. But that's what this person was saying, which I appreciate. If you are thinking of selling 10 years down the line, I personally would pick a design that's quite universal that anyone would like. It just makes financial sense to do, so I wouldn't exactly put in like a pink kitchen or something crazy. But if you see yourself living somewhere for a long time, then just do what you like. Honestly, over time, everything changes. Fashion changes, our lifestyle changes, interiors change, makeup and hair trends change over time. So I don't really think it matters if it's trendy right now or not. That's just my opinion. I'm not really sure what this next question means, but I think I can understand it. Hey, I want to ask you something. If I select a course like interior design or interior architecture, would I get a job like an employee in a company or something like that? And this is what I wanted to mention. So if you're referring to a online course, then the answer to me is no. If you're talking about a university course, then yes. And 
I don't know if that will disappoint some of you, but with a lot of these online courses that I see, they're usually quite short and I don't really know the ins and outs 100%, but it's very basic stuff like mood boards, you know, how to use a very basic computer software, how to put together color palettes, stuff like that, which is all really good stuff, but that's almost interior decoration rather than interior design and interior architecture. And I do compare these online courses to university courses and university courses here in the UK are three years and they're specified. And I believe in America you do four years, but what the first year is like a mixture of subjects and then you specialize. Leave me a comment below if that's wrong, I'm not sure. So in my opinion, I feel like how can you learn three to four years worth of content in a short course. Like I said, I don't know fully what people are learning on these online courses, so I can't really say, but look at the time frame. that's your answer. And also part of that, a lot of you ask if I have my own online course that you can do, and the answer is no, because it'd be very misleading if I did something like that, because I personally don't think you should do these online courses, I think you should go to university and that might be really unpopular, but that's just what I believe. I don't really know how these online courses get away with it because obviously they're getting lots of people's money and when you look up jobs for interior design or interior architecture, they do require a degree most of the time, so I don't really understand why these courses are doing that. The way I like to explain it is, could you become a doctor by doing an online course in medicine? No you have to go to university and med school. You know what I'm trying to say? A lot of people think that you can do that to do interior design and it's not the case. The funny thing is people would never assume that with architecture, they all know that you have to get a degree to become an architect and it's the same for interior design and interior architecture. I'm just putting it out there maybe and a real strong maybe i would do a course in the future but it would be on interior decoration i think these online courses are really good for people who want to become interior decorators after doing another kind of career in their life um and starting their own interior decoration business but if you were wanting to do that and then actually go out and be hired by a company i don't really think your chances are very high. So, you know, don't waste your money. Question seven. Hi, great video. Thank you for the information. I studied agri, I'm assuming agriculture, not architecture. So agriculture in university for my bachelor's here in Nigeria. But I'm really looking to go into interior architecture and design for my master's in the UK as I have a huge passion for it. Do I stand a chance and what are the requirements? So if you did a degree in agriculture, you wouldn't get in to do a master's here in the UK. You would need a bachelor's in some kind of design field, preferably architecture or interior design. So I'm sorry. So the next question. As an interior architect, can we draw floor plans like five story buildings? What are the career opportunities? Yes, we absolutely do draw floor plans. And again, I think this is a misconception that all we do is just little, you know, hand drawn sketches and create mood boards. That is, of course, part of it, but it's a really small part. If you graduate with a degree in interior architecture, you can go into all different kinds of arenas. Some people even leave architecture completely and go into the art industry or even movie industry and become set designers, that kind of thing. That's one avenue. Secondly, if you finish your degree and you realize that you like the architecture side more, that's absolutely fine. What a lot of designers tend to do is go into an architectural firm, just let's just say Foster and Partners as an example. And when you have these big architectural firms, it's not just architects that work there. I think a lot of people think that but that's not true it's a mixture of designers graphic designers interior architects architects structural engineers you name it they have it so that's one avenue to go down if you want to do more non-decorative projects and with interior design there's two main sectors commercial or residential you could work with clients who want to renovate their home or you could work on luxury properties that's always fun or on the commercial side, which is really anything from offices, restaurants, hotels, spas, hospitals. You know, people honestly think that interior designers just do houses and homes, which 
you know, it's always on TV that way, but that's not true. Any building you're usually in has been designed by an interior architect or interior designer. I hope that helps you out. So this was the question that came up kind of earlier. Thank you for sharing this information in the video. It is very helpful for me, I'm, I'm glad. And this is a really impressive portfolio to me. Thank you. And I'm an 11th grade student in America. And my question is, did you get a scholarship by that portfolio? That's the first question. Secondly, do I have to know about SketchUp and digital apps before going to college? That's a really good question. So did you get a scholarship by that portfolio? Again, we don't do scholarships here. So it is what it is. We just have to spend lots of money. Mm. And do I have to know about SketchUp and digital apps before going to college? That's a good question. So in my portfolio, you would have seen that I did have a couple of sketched up stuff for my product design A level. And I'll insert some photos here. And that was only because I chosen graphic design at GCSE level and then product design at A level. So luckily I was taught to use SketchUp at school. But if you haven't, I wouldn't worry because they do teach you that at college slash university. So don't worry too much about the software. But obviously, if a lecturer saw your portfolio and it did have software work in there, of course, it's increasing your chances a lot getting into university. But again, it's not absolutely crucial. If you really want to go down that route and, you know, do a bit of experimentation work with SketchUp, it's absolutely fine. There's so many tutorials on YouTube to help you out. So I'm sure that will be helpful. Next question. So question 10 is, what subjects do I need for interior design or architecture in 11th and 12th grade? Which I guess is at the end of school. I mean, here we have year 12 and 13 which is when you're at the end of high school. So it all depends on which country you're in. I can't really say for all of the countries, but here in the UK, to do an interior architecture or interior design degree, they will always ask for a creative subject done at A level. And that could be art, it could be photography, it could be product design. I don't really remember what subjects there are <laughs> at school, to be honest with you. But for myself, my A levels were geography, maths, product design and art. That's the one. I was really conscious when choosing my A levels to pick subjects that would help me accumulate a lot of work for my university portfolio. Like I said, I'm not sure what it's like in other countries if they are serious about a portfolio or not, but here the really good universities, the creative universities always want to see a portfolio. To be honest, it's more important than the grades themselves. So I would always say pick at least one creative subject because it's not just to get into university, but what you learn on these creative subjects is actually really helpful for interior design as a job. For example, art and graphic design, all the software I learned, I still use today. Okay, next question. How, very straight to the point, how much do interior architects earn? Let's break it down. So in America, interior designers earn roughly $59,000 a year. Architects earn 88,000, which to me is insane because here in the UK, the interior design and architect salaries are much closer together. For example, here in the UK, a qualified architect, depending on experience, could earn between 32,000 and 45,000 pounds. And a senior associate or partner, you'd earn between 45,000 to 70,000 pounds a year. And for interior design here in the UK, junior designers anywhere from 18,000 to 23,000. Experienced interior designers, 25,000 to 40,000 pounds. And senior designers and creative directors, 45,000 to 75,000 pounds. So it's very similar to architecture salaries. Not in America, apparently. <laughs> if we look at, if you run your own company, how much interior designers charge, this is for the UK, anywhere between 50 to 100 pounds an hour, depending on experience and the pricing structure. And the average hourly rate for an architect in the UK is 50 to 100 pounds an hour, just to give you guys an idea. And interior architects are obviously a little bit more than interior designers, so we earn a little bit more than that. I hope that clears things up, but from my research, it definitely seems like architects get paid much more in America, so... If money's important to you, maybe do that. 
<laughs> but like I said, here in the UK, there's not much difference in salaries. Okay, so the next question is, hi, just watched your video and it's so informative, thank you so much. But I had a question, I'm an 11th grade student with no maths, but I would really love to be an interior architect. So do we need to have maths as a subject for being an interior architect? I hope you answer. Guys, you ask me this question non-stop and I don't blame you because I was exactly like you back in the day thinking I needed maths and I, like I said before, I actually took A-level maths but I dropped it later on in the year because honestly we had the worst teacher. You can't really teach maths to yourself. I'm just saying. So I dropped it and that was because when I found out I didn't need maths to get in to do interior architecture or interior design, it didn't really matter. But here in the UK, I know that you do need maths on some architecture courses, like the good architecture courses, they do want a maths A-level. Just so you're aware, I mean, it might be like that in other places as well. So my advice is to look at the university you're thinking of and see what requirements they ask for. And looking back, it was the right decision because the things we were learning at that level were so irrelevant to my profession. If you want the realty, all interior architecture and design entails is mostly geometry and very basic level stuff. And of course, you know, multiplication, division, basic things like that. Certainly not the amount of I was learning at A-level maths, like integers, statistical sampling, all of that stuff I have never used. So honestly, guys, do not worry about the maths thing. All I can suggest is look up where you want to apply and see what their requirements are, but hopefully they don't require maths. <laughs> Okay, next question. Not sure if you'll see this, but I'm a current junior in high school. I've been looking into interior design and have been educating myself about it, but I'm a bit intimidated. If I have zero art skills or background and cannot draw to save my life, is that okay? Also, if the school load is really bad, will I be spending every night till 2am working on school or will I have some free time? Just curious. It sounds like a great major, but also sounds crazy. Hmm. Okay, the drawing question. A lot of you guys ask me if you're not creative, if you're not arty. Obviously, I would say if you are creative and you're good at drawing, it really does make your life 10 times easier when you get into university. But whilst you're at college slash university, you will be taught how to draw, at least I was anyway. I can't really relate because I have always liked art and drawing and that kind of stuff. But I wouldn't worry because you do get taught from scratch. And I always use this example, but Frank Gehry's drawings aren't exactly top quality in my opinion and he's like one of the top architects in the world so you know just give yourself a break and yeah will i be spending every night till 2 a.m working on school yeah it's more like 5 a.m i'm just kidding but it's a renowned fact that architects at university are working all the time and it's not made up unfortunately. I think the biggest thing that I've learned is time management is everything at university, especially with architecture or interior design courses. A lot of my friends would have barely any work to do, whereas I would have to do a 3D model, I'd have to make a whole presentation, I'd have to do hand draw sketches, I'd have to mock up a whole model in a software, and all they had to do was write an essay which no offense to them would only take a day whereas interior design and architecture you can visually see how much work someone's put into something so unfortunately yes the hours are going to be long but that's why i always say if you're passionate about it you'll do really well and you'll enjoy it you know because you're all going through it together remember okay next one hi i have some questions i watched your video on the differences between interior design and interior architecture Anyway, I think I'm leaning towards interior architecture as I really love the aesthetic and soft furnishing side, as well as being able to have a qualification to knock out walls and stuff on my own. The first question I have is, if I do study interior architecture, will I be qualified to call myself an interior designer as well? And secondly, how long would I need to study to be a qualified interior architect? That's a really good question, I get asked that all the time. So interior architects can call themselves interior designers because we do all that kind of stuff as well. 
But to be honest with you, sometimes I just call myself an interior designer because when you say you're an interior architect, most people don't really know what that is or what it means. And it's just easier to say interior designer. <laughs> And how long does it take? So like I said before, here in the UK, university is three years and it's a specific course. So you're not doing other kinds of subjects. Like in America, you have a major and I don't really understand that because it kind of sounds like you're doing different subjects at university. Anyway, it's not like that here. You do three years specifically on interior design. Or you can do four years, which I believe is called a sandwich course. Yes, sandwich really because one of the years you actually work in industry. That's all it is really. Okay, this is my last question because I'm afraid the video might be like a million years long. Hi, I'm in year nine right now and I have an options evening tomorrow to choose what I want to do in year 10. That's like GCSE level here. And I want to become an interior designer. What subject should I pick? I have to do all the core subjects, but should I pick product design or graphic design? Ooh. So this is GCSE level when I believe you're 15, 14, I don't remember. Here in the UK, we have GCSEs when you're at the lower part of high school and then at higher bit of high school, you do A levels and those get you into university, if that makes sense. So I'm not sure what the American equivalents are, but feel free to write it down. So when I was at GCSE, just like you, I had to do the core subjects like maths, English, science. I don't remember what else we had and then i i picked geography french art and graphic design product design wasn't actually an option for us at gcse so good on you but then like i said before at a level i then did product design because graphic design wasn't a thing at a level so i don't really know why if i were to pick two subjects that really helped me it would definitely be graphic design at gcse level and product design at a level because both of them actually really helped me develop my presentations on computer as well as learning software and no offense to subjects like art they make you be extremely creative and i loved art but product design and graphic design i actually learned sketchup fully so that's something to think about and if you are thinking of only choosing one then i would lean towards product design because it's more in line with interiors i hope that helps if you guys need more advice please leave questions below because i will help you out i will definitely be doing a part two to this because i actually had i think 30 questions but i just couldn't fit it all in so for next time feel free to leave me any questions you might have if you're new to the channel, then I just want to say welcome. On the channel, we talk about interior design, architecture, tips for designers, and all that cool creative stuff in between. So if any of that interests you, make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this one. I would love if you left me some kind of question mark emoji down below to let me know that you enjoyed the video or learned something new. And if you liked it, then please give it a big thumbs up because by doing that, you actually really help our channel to reach even more people. So that was my first Q&A on the channel. I really hope that I helped you out. Out. feel free to leave me any more questions even if they're not design related thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one bye